Hi everyone, Paolo here and welcome back to the channel. This is another Unreal Engine tutorial. This is part of my Unreal Engine UMG UI series. In this video, we're going to learn how to recreate one of the animated buttons from the UI Material Lab. With 40 material functions and over 100 usage example, this is an amazing resource. I use this technique in one game I'm working on it looks better than using button textures to animate. In this video, I'm going to break down building the minimal button and also touch some of the items I have covered in previous videos like modular, widgets, and widget animation. We will quickly go over the project and how to navigate the specific assets you want to drill down to in the content drawer. Then we are going to migrate the material functions to a blank new project and start from there. Let's go! So here I have the UI Material Lab project uh, open. As you can see, there's some cool animations here. One is transform. There's gradients, there's time, there's SDFs, mask, patterns, distortions, utilities, and applications. So the one we're going to try to recreate is the minimal buttons here. As you can see, if I hover on one item, it would animate. And similar, other stuffs are made the same here. But I feel these are a little bit more complex. This one is the easiest to recreate. So we'll start with this one. So if I exit this project, I'm going to quickly show you how to get to that. So open up the UI Material Lab and under the widgets, under pages, this is where all those tabs are structured. So the number nine, when you open it up, uh, if you want to jump quickly to one item, click on it and look at the hierarchy here. You can see this is using a modular uh, widget. So all these buttons share the same um, code. So you could right click and edit widget blueprint. It should bring you to that particular widget. And here it has a super overlay, a button background, a text and a button. So on the button background here, you would see it's using a material. And if I quickly hover, uh, go to the animation section here and click on hover, you would see it's referencing a brush uh, material and there's a hover parameter and a bit net size on that material so let's jump into that material um, you could also quickly search for it here M I U I button yeah so this one material instance if you open it up you could see there's a bunch of parameters here that you could change you could change the color the controls the outline and the shape uh, what we're interested in is the parent. We want to click on here and that should bring up the parent. So here is how the material was set up. There's a bunch of parameters, some lerping, and it's using some of the material functions which we're going to use and migrate to a new project. So here, this is setting up the wave, this animation here, and then the bottom box here which is defining the, but the box itself. Cool, so we're going to jump into that. Um, first off, I want to show you the material functions here. So this is the one that is mostly used here. Um, so we're not going to try to recreate this, but we're going to migrate this. So you could right click on this folder and select migrate and open up a new, another project, a temporary project. See here I have a blank project with nothing on it. So we're going to migrate this to this project. So I'm going to hit OK here. It's going to ask me which directory I want to save it. So I'm on the right directory. Make sure it's on the content folder and hit on open. Cool. Once that is complete, you can jump back to that project and you would see everything there has been migrated. Now we could start using this functions and recreate that button. Cool. So first off, go to the content here. Let's create a couple of folders. Uh, we're going to create a UI folder and another folder for maps and another folder for materials. So let's start with the UI. Open that folder, right click and select user interface widget blueprint. And then call, give this a name, widget blueprint um, UI button. Open that up and we're gonna do the same. So we're gonna create an overlay and this overlay, we're going to stack up the image, the text, and the button. So first is the image. This one, give it a name of image background. Make sure it's a variable. Extend it all the way through. Also, search for 
text, drag it on the overlay. So right now we can't see it because the uh, text is white. So let's change that to black. I'll make that centered and also centered here. And make this a variable as well. So move that and make that a variable. Next, search for a button and drag it like so. And this one is called button hit. And it's also a variable. Now we want the opacity and the color here to be transparent. Um, sorry, not this one. Expand this and change the alpha to zero for the color and opacity and do the same for the color here. Make that zero. And you may want to resize this because this is all that we needed. Cool. So I'm going to save that and I also want to put this oversize here. So right click here and select wrap width and say uh, size box because I noticed something weird. So here uh, adjust the width and height. So here I'm just going to give it a width of 300 and a height of 90. That looks much better. Cool. Now let's jump to the graph. So on the graph here we want the uh, text to be dynamic. So click here for a new variable and call it button text with a type of text. Compile, make that instance editable, give it a default text. And we're just going to grab that, do a get. And same for the text block, do a get and search for a node called text set text. So basically whatever is the text passed from this parameter, um, make that the value. So hook that up like that and that should be it for now for this one. Go back to the content drawer and create another user interface widget. So this one we're going to call BP intro main. Open that up and then start with the canvas panel this time. Drag that like so and let's uh, add a vertical box and uh, actually let's add a border and put the vertical box on the border make sure it's a child cool and then the border we're gonna center align it and make sure it's in the middle and size the content and go back to the vertical box here and search for that uh, widget that we just created, the UI button. Drag that in there and give this a name. So you can see we have a parameter here for the button text, which we defined earlier. So you can say new game. Um, copy it a couple more times. And for the second one, we're going to say continue. And for the third one, we're going to say quit. So we're not going to implement the full functionality. We're just going to uh, cater for the button animation on this tutorial. So compile that. So let's jump back to the button here and to the designer and to the image background. So here we need to define that brush. So the brush here, you could create a new material here and define it like so. But I would do it like this. Go to the content drawer. Go to the material folder that we created right click and select material and this one we're going to say m underscore ui button open that up first off this is what you get so this won't work with the when you use the brush or a texture in a widget so you need to change the material domain to user interface and change the blend mode to uh, translucent so this is the one that's going to animate so first off, let's define the final color. Uh, right click and select a constant tree vector. Promote this to a variable. So we're going to call this outline color. And this would be the light color. So set it like that and do a lerp. So lerp is the one that we're going to use to animate between the two states. So um, duplicate this and call this one hover and hook it on the lerp here and for the alpha uh, promote this to a variable 
and change this to is hover. And we're going to do another lerp. And finally, hook that up to the final color like so. And we're going to duplicate this. Control D. For the first uh, parameter here, this is going to be called button color. And make this color and make this color a bit darker. So I'm going to change like that. And for the other one, this is going to be called button color hover. And that should be fine. So hook this up like that. And you should get something like that. Uh, so we're next, we're going to define the alpha. So this would be the actual button. So scroll to the left here. And we're going to start using the first material function. So search for get user interface UV. So here it's going to turn us a UV, basically a horizontal and a vertical uh, UV. So from here, drag and search for MF UI SDF box. So this is one of the one that came from that UI material lab. So this one defines a box. So we could actually go here and create a reroute node to hook this up so we could see something in the screen. Uh, add name reroute declaration node. So this is common on that um, project where it creates reroute nodes. So it's like a shortcut. So here, give it a name of um, button alpha. Cool. And scroll back a little here, and then we could hook up that one. So if you right click and search for button alpha, you would see that now. So it's like a shortcut. From there, you could look, link, link that like so. So now we have that shape, that um, size. So by default, it's a square. So we could define the size here. So create a new constant. Convert that to a parameter, and this one we're going to say size x. Duplicate that, and this would be size y. So you could play around with the size here. So here for my x, I'm just going to define as 0.186. And for the y, I'm going to define as 0.5. And I'm going to append the two to create a vector. So append vector. And hook it up like so to the size. Now that should um, get me the size that I want for my button. Next, let me make some space here. Uh, clone this one and let's create one for roundness. So we have some round, uh, round corners. So roundness. And I believe this is just 0.2. And hook that up to the corner radius. Oh, so it's not, it's this. Uh, I set it too big, so 0.2. So now you have that corner radius in there. So next, we're going to have some glow max. So it's going to be a little bit faded. So clone one of the parameter, rename it to glow max. And I believe this is just 0 0.02, very small. And hook that up to the glow max. Uh, might need a little bit more. so change that to 0 0.8 uh, there you go so that's much better um, next as uh, the static bool so right click and search for static bool set that to true this to keep the aspect ratio so that should be there uh, next this is also going to output a fill an outline SDF and SDF outline so we want an SDF so here create another reroute node and this time call this um, SDF box. So this is the box that we're going to try to animate. So we could already make a comment here and say this is going to be bottom box. Cool. Next, slide down a little bit here. We're going to start animating that uh, SDF box. So we could right click and search for SDF box here. And we're going to use this for creating that. So we want that wavy thing going on. So here we're going to create a, maybe copy this from the hover here, clone it a couple of times. We're going to have one for speed and one for the repetition. So for here, let's say wave speed. And the other one is going to be wave repetition. So we're going to create, a not, we're going to, 
so we're going to call another material function called mf linear uh, ui linear time and this one by default is going to hook up to the float value let's hook that up to the speed and i'm just going to quickly change this to 0.1 and this material linear time is going to output a loop ping pong or switch you could check the material lab for an example of this uh, kind of animation and we're going to call another function from here called mf ui wave and instead of sdf input here unhook that and put the loop on the motion and the sdf box here put it on sdf input and for the repetition hook that up for the repetition like so give it a value um, you play around with this one so here i'm going to define this for and finally it's going to output something so here for the cosine um, do a smooth step and instead of min here and hook that hook that up to the value and do a one minus and do a multiply we're going to define the lower half later and do another multiply and finally we could hook this up to the uh, button alpha here for the opacity so here I'm gonna right click and say max and for the multiply here at this bottom node I'm gonna hook that up there and finally I'm gonna hook this up to the opacity here and that should remove some of this uh, area or start animating it cool so now it's animating but we still have this funky looking background so we're gonna start fixing that so for the SDF box here we're gonna do a smooth step again so smooth step and instead of the min there disconnect that hook that up here I disconnected my wave here as well so like that and the vignette size here you could define this uh, parameter as well so here say vignette size give it a little bit space and set that to 0.3 to a 1 minus hook that to the multiply here and that should start becoming a little bit more better for the other multiply here right click and promote that to a parameter this is going to be the outline alpha so right now you won't see it so change that to 0 0.05 and you would see it animating so pretty much that's the button so we're going to comment this and this would be the wave animation cool so now we can start using that um this material for our button so i'm just going back to the content drawer right click here and create a material instance I'm just gonna rename this to mi indicate that it's an instance cool and then save that now we could jump back to the bottom so the widget here click under here and then select for the image select that material instance we just created so mi ui button and there you go so we have that animated button going on here next we're going to try to do the animation so here click on the plus here and click um select hover and select that image select that track image track under the track select uh, brush material and under the brush material here select the is hovered so under is hovered here shrink this animation clip to probably 0.50 drag it like that and there's already a keyframe defined for the initial start so go to the end of 0.50 and add another keyframe so this time set the hovered state to one so if you dra drag that you could see the button is animated so jump into the graph now and look at the button hit 
so on the button hit here there's two events here hovered and unhovered so click on both to add a node on the graph and drag the hover um, animation that we have and we want to do a play animation so when we do play animation here connect it like that and for unhovered clone this play animation and hook it like that but this time the play mode instead of forward set it to reverse and hook it up like that compile save now we're ready to use this intro main if we look at it uh, still the border doesn't look right so go to the border here and then let's round some of those corners so one cool thing i found out for here is under the brush if you change the draw as image to rounded box but you could actually create rounded corners for it so click on the outline settings here there's a corner radius there um, and a rounding type so for the rounding type here set it to fix radius and that should take the value from here so if i change these values for example the y here change that to 40 that will make it rounded there so I'm just going to quickly select that border again and select 40 for the other side. So this is how it's going to look like. Cool. Now it's time to add it to the layout. So here I have this level. I don't like this. Um, so I'm just going to jump to the maps, create a new level. And I'm just going to say intro map. Open it up, save everything. Yep. And from here, I'm going to open up the level blueprint. Under event begin play, I'm going to create a widget and I'm going to call the WBP intro main that we just created and add to viewport. And you might need to also add the get player controller so we could set the mouse cursor to true. And probably also set the input mode input mode to UI only and hook it up like that so compile save go back to the intro and play it and there you have it however when I click on it it doesn't look like it's animating so I think I know the problem so I think if I go to the corner side here it would animate that is because if we go back to the button that I created, go to the designer and under the button here, hit here, you can see that our button is not extended. The alignment is not right. So extend that all the way through. Compile, save. Let's try it again. And there you go. And the button is not quite right. So to adjust that, just open the material instance and adjust any of the properties here. You could adjust the button color the hover state and all of these so for the uh, outline color probably change this to something like that and let's change it to something funky pink and same thing here pink and you could also preview it here by the hover so if you do this change the value here you would see what it looks like so I'm just gonna save that um, actually gonna set that back to zero save go back to the intro map and hit play now that's looking much better and when i click on it it would animate and change color uh, the animation is quite slow so you could tweak that to your liking to change that animation just go back to the button and change the settings from here so i think if i make this a bit faster maybe 30 should be fine um, i'm gonna stop and play it again Yep, so it's now more a little bit more responsive with uh, lowering around the animation. Cool. So hope you like this video. Thumbs up, thumbs down. I'm going to try to uh, dissect other more items from that material lab.